Hi guys, today we're in Istanbul drinking tea and coffee on just a random street of Kadikoy and I'm together with Ella Grego, my new um, Istanbulish friend. Can I call you like that? Of course. <laughs> Ella is a model and personal trainer and a food blogger. We're gonna talk about modeling, life in Istanbul. Uh, Ella is from Croatia, but she will tell you the story, how she ended up here. You can also pour yourself a cup of tea because the conversation will be quite long. I've been living in Istanbul, we can say for seven years, more or less. I've been uh, traveling back and forth, mm. but in the last year and a half, I'm here all the time uh, because I met my boyfriend, he's Turkish, and uh, we live together, so that's why I'm here. So when I came to Turkey for the first time, it was in 2012, like seven years ago, uh, I was traveling a lot the time and my agency was always finding me contracts in different places. And then they said, hey, you know, like it's summertime, Europe is pretty slow, do you want to go to Istanbul? And I was like, uh, Istanbul, okay, that's weird. Like, do they have fashion there? Like, are people not, you know, wearing like burkas? <laughs> but anyway, I talked to some of my model friends and they said that it's actually pretty nice. So I gave it a go. I remember when I was coming here for the first time, I was crying on the plane <laughs> nonstop. And I was like, Ella, what are you doing? Why are you going there? You know, like you don't need it. <laughs> Uh, and it took me some time to get used to it in the beginning, but then I started trying all of the Turkish food and I liked it. <laughs> I like the nature here, I like the sea, it's pretty beautiful. Um, especially, you know, places like Bodrum or uh, the Aegean Sea Coast, it's really nice. The lack of work ethics, I guess, and uh, lack of discipline, that's something that I clash with on a daily basis, but what can you do sometimes? <laughs> I started modeling 12 years ago. I was scouted very early when I was 15. And I started traveling pretty young. So while I was in the high school, I was just waiting for my summer break to start so I can go to London and uh, explore the city, learn the language and work obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just building up my portfolio and uh, getting used to like living abroad and meeting new cultures and mm -hmm. I think London was like the, the best place for me to grow up, you know, mm -hmm. because the city is like so diverse. Mm -hmm. There is literally people from all around the world living there. There is no judgment at all. I feel it's like when you are there, you can just do whatever you want mm -hmm. and everybody is so free, there is no judgment. So I just, you know, in the, those early days, I learned how to accept myself, how to accept everyone around me and how to develop my character in a really free and open-minded way. You know, modeling agencies can be pretty rough, like, <clears throat> Imagine a 17-year-old girl walking into an agency in Paris on your first day of your contract and they just come with this measuring tape and they measure your chest, your waist and your hips. And if your hips are 92 instead of 89, uh, darling, you have to lose weight or you're not gonna work. That's pretty harsh, you know, like even though I'm all over these things now, I still get a like, pretty bad feeling whenever I see a measuring tape because they just teach you how to see yourself as a number and if your number on your hips is god forbid higher then you just feel like you're not good enough it's really really bad for the psychology and i believe that like girls which are not genetically blessed uh, and which are not uh, extremely skinny naturally maybe should consider another job because it can ruin your psychology. I had some moments when my agencies were pressuring me to lose weight and uh, I remember I was in Milan for three months and even though I was like doing lots of cardio and walking around and eating less, I just didn't lose at all. I think because I was pressured that my body was just keeping on everything, you know? And then of course, with those restrictive diets, there were times of overeating because you just get so stressed and so overwhelmed that you just see a pizza and you just go for it all, you know? Uh, so yeah, I went through that, but it cannot happen again, you know? I'm, I got my lessons now. It was Magnum TV commercial because I ate like 17 ice creams in two hours. <laughs> okay, I didn't have the whole 17 ice creams, you know, there is the Magnum crack, so you just 
take a bite of the bottom of the top of the ice cream. I gave it back to the guy and then he brings me the fresh ice cream. So I was just snacking on Magnum all night. It was so much fun. Book me again, guys. <laughs> I think there was like some law of attraction happening over there because before I got scouted, I've been thinking about applying to an agency. But I was like, no, you know, I don't want to apply to a Croatian agency. I don't want to work in Croatia. It's not on the level that I like. And then one month later, suddenly, this woman approached me on a boat and she was like, hi, how old are you? Are your parents around? Like, do you want to be a model, you know? Yeah. And I was there like, yes, let me find my mom, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so yeah, I, I wanted it and it happened. Mm -hmm. I think I was lucky. I started in London, then I traveled uh, around Europe. Like I went to Milan, Paris, Spain, Greece, uh, Germany. Uh, I've never been to Sweden though, but I really want. Denmark is also my list, especially for work and as, um, as for a holiday. I travel to South America for work as well. I lived in uh, Chile, in Santiago for four months. Wow. I visited uh, Argentina when I was there. Uh, I went to China only once. You know, lots of models travel to Asia and they stay in China, Japan. Uh, Korea for a long time. I just did China for two months. I couldn't do more than that. <laughs> I always tell them like, don't be a slave to the agency. Have your opinion. Do what you think it's right. Because I see them being so like afraid of the agency and feeling like they have to obey all of the rules because the agencies are training you to become their puppy, you know? And I just don't want them to make the same mistakes I did. So yeah. sometimes, you know, I do teach them a bit. It feels nice to, I don't know, I feel like a little bit proud of myself to be able to say that I've been doing it for so long and I'm still like in the game and I can still do it. And it's nice to have like so much experience and to be professional in mm. one field. But I also feel like I, gave already like 80 percent you know there is just a bit left and then i will have to get out yeah. the hardest thing about my work is the future of that work itself you know like i can have the most amazing job this week and i can shoot a tv commercial and i can travel to an amazing location and then three months later the season is down and you don't get to work so much so the inconsistency i would say and the stress that comes with that it's really hard to deal with. And also uh, maybe not being able to upgrade as much, you know, like you don't get promoted suddenly or your prices don't go up just for no reason. Um, and the best part about my job was definitely being able to travel, to see the world and to meet so many amazing people. As a model, uh, in order to build your network, I think it's just very important to connect with everyone at the shoot, like on set. So there is a photographer, his assistant, stylist, their assistants, uh, makeup artist. It's really nice to just talk to everyone, to be super nice, because you never know when they can um, book you for another job, or maybe, you know, that assistant is gonna be the boss one day, so you better be nice to everyone. <laughs> You know, actually, I just talked about it in my uh, video that yeah. I shot today. Yeah, a burnout, it happened last year to me. I worked non-stop for three months. I think I had none to maybe like one day off during, you know, a week. Wow. And yeah, you know, maybe some people are gonna say, come on, you are a model, but I do work really hard, you know, like just imagine changing 50 to 100 outfits in a day standing up on your feet in, a, in the high heels. Like, I think modeling is not something that you can really do every day, Monday to Friday, like going to the office. I got extremely tired. Um, after two months of doing that, I was already like having some crisis. I would just burst into tears when I was at work. Everybody was irritating me. I wouldn't let them touch my hair and makeup. I would just, you know, leave the room. Yeah. And I said, okay, you need a holiday. So I left to Milan for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. To chill down. What I have been doing, I was uh, searching, you know, deep inside of myself. I was trying to understand what do I really love, what is really making me happy, and is there a job that I will be able to do 
without burning out because obviously I burned out because I didn't really love and enjoy what I was doing. Mm. Yes, I like being a model, but I don't really like I don't I don't like it that much yeah. <laughs> to be honest, like I don't want to lie. And in that time I discovered that I actually really love cooking and healthy food. I knew it all the time, but this was the moment when I was like, okay, that's what I actually want to do, yeah. you know? Because I also felt like I didn't have much more choice. I felt like, okay, I'm going to go back to modeling and I will experience a burnout again. Or I'm actually going to do something with my passion so I can actually sustain that through a longer period. It still took me like a little bit of time until I was brave enough to start. Because I was really full of self-doubt. I was like not really sure if people are going to watch. Do they want to like see just you know another model talking about food or whatever and when I felt like I was brave enough I started sharing recipes on my Instagram and I opened a YouTube channel and that was like this year in January. Cooking class is something which is a, a pretty new concept I believe and I think it's pretty rare actually um, I don't know anyone else doing something like this I know people doing workshops and they organize like, you know, raw desserts workshop for the whole weekend or like uh, vegan food or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like the concept so much because you go there for two days in a row, morning till night, there is a chef and there is like 20 people cooking the same thing. So yeah, you do learn something, but I don't believe that's like really sustainable. Yeah. And I don't believe that helps you in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. If you go to that kind of a course and you learn how to make a vegan brownie, that's not going to make you healthier yeah. overall, you know? Yeah. It will help you to avoid like buying um, donuts, but yeah. you're yeah. not going to eat healthy every day. Yeah. And I wanted to help people change their habits and help people become healthier overall, mm -hmm. you know? And my friends would used to tell me sometimes that I inspire them and how they start cooking healthier because of what I do. So I said, okay, maybe I can be kind of a health coach. No, should I become a life coach? No. And I was just asking myself in which direction yeah. I exactly want to go. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to train people how to cook healthy, you know. Yeah. I'm going to give them some knowledge on like nutrients. Uh, why protein, why fat, why carbs, yeah. like what is important, um, some good alternatives. For example, you really like your pancakes with Nutella, I'm going to give you oatmeal, almond flour pancakes for breakfast. So like healthy alternatives for people and practical advices as well on like food prep, meal prep, mm, so they can yeah. cook on the weekend and in the weekdays they just grab it all out of the fridge and they have a healthy dish in five minutes, you know. I was thinking about doing it online as well, but because for me food is something that, you know, you have to touch it and smell it and I think you really have to be present, yeah. you know. I could try doing like an online course yeah. and just test it to see how it goes, but I think for the beginning it will stay offline, yeah. you know, and it's a uh, it's not really exclusive, but it is petite because it's one-on-one -on -one course. Mm -hmm. I work with people individually in their homes. It's, you know, that kind of a service that I provide. So mm -hmm. because of my time limits, I cannot have more than a couple of students each right. month. Yeah, so after like three years of coming and uh, going back, I realized that it will just be so much easier if I finally start speaking. Um, because lots of people don't speak English and I didn't want to like bother people around me to translate anymore and I found this school which is like uh, a speedy course and uh, you only go there three times per week and I signed up for the school I realized that I'm studying pretty fast and well and then I just continued um, and I'm on the B2 now yeah I think for anyone who wants to learn Turkish school is a must because it's a really different language and it's pretty complex. Um, so trying to study on your own or uh, just, you know, picking it up from the street, it's not going to work on the long term. Just go to school and everything will be easy. 
So the reason that I actually started to eat healthy is because I'm not genetically really blessed like other models. I gain weight really easily and I always had to pay much more attention. So you can see it as a disadvantage, but I actually learned how to love healthy food and how to love exercise that right now I turned it into my life, you know, into my work. And I'm really grateful for that. Chocolate protein porridge. I'm going to post the recipe soon. Uh, it's so yummy and it's so healthy and so good for you, especially if you work out. I always love a good salad with a bunch of stuff inside, with cheese, salmon, dry fruits, nuts. I really love fish pie. I think most of the people will not like my answer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I am for the real body image. I really love to see unphotoshopped models, like I love to see stretch marks, I love to see cellulite because we are all like that. I'm sure even top models do have cellulite, but I'm against plus size models. Uh, I know that there are people with like, you know, diseases, most of these things can be genetic, uh, they can have some metabolic diseases, but um, what I really don't like to hear and see is like when people gain like 50 pounds and they brag about it on social media like I'm healthy and happy right now. Yes, you are maybe happy, but you are not healthy because you know if your BMI is higher than I guess 25 or 30, then you are clinically obese, right? And clinical obesity is a disease. So I don't really support like people bragging about gaining weight. But I am also really against like perfect Photoshop models because nobody looks like that. Come on, I don't look like my Instagram. <laughs> what are we talking about? I am for body positivism, you know, like we all have to love ourselves the way we are and uh, nobody can love you as much as you can. And we all have to accept ourselves. But I'm just, you know, against I'm against, I'm against lying, like you cannot be healthy with a BMI of 35 because you are obese, that's all. This book by Anthony Robbins, The Power Within, I loved it. Ella Mills, Joe Weeks, Jamie Oliver and uh, Joe Holder, also Kirsty Gotso. She's a Nike master trainer, I love her, she does crazy stuff. Nishanta Shien Galato. London, South America again, I want to visit Peru, vintage clothes, plus shoes, reading a book, oh Naomi, I was just stalking her Instagram this morning, she still got it. <laughs> I'm so glad that you asked, you know, because I think that people need to be more aware of this issue. Uh, me personally, I stopped I cannot say stopped, it will be a lie, but like I really minimized buying fast fashion. Like maybe only 5% of the time I would buy something in Zara or H&M if I really, really have to. Um, I prefer to buy vintage and I prefer like not to shop because we really don't need another piece of clothing to just, you know, harm the environment. Like I have lots of clothes at home that I can use to look nice and also I believe that like buying vintage can make you look so much cooler and nicer and you can actually stand out, right? I try to eliminate food waste as well. Uh, what I do is like... <laughs> Hi! I see you again. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. So yeah, there are some things that I try to do to eliminate food waste and uh, everybody can do it. You guys start doing it at home right now. So for example, I'm cutting my spinach or uh, peppers like the part of the spinach that you would normally throw away or the part of the pepper that you would throw away. Keep it in a freezer bag, collect a bit of it, like, you know, a huge portion. And once when you have enough, you can cook it to use vegetable stock. And if you cook your pasta or rice, or if you use it for soups, it tastes amazing. My favorite outfit at the moment would be just sneakers, but uh, maybe something that I'm wearing today. I don't know. I like to wear, I like to wear pants uh, instead of jeans because jeans, uh, jeans and sneakers are just so lazy. You know, it's like, dude, you didn't put any effort. Uh, so I like to wear 
dresses or pants combined with sneakers because then I get to be comfortable and look nice at the same time. It's a really interesting question. I always think that like if you do something right, if you do it with passion and if you do it from the bottom of your heart, you will have good results, you will change people and you will make an impact on the world. Um, and I believe that it's just important to stay true to yourself, you know, like if I get an offer from a junk food brand to promote them, even if it's the huge amount of money, I will say no because something I don't believe in. Uh, and unfortunately, there are many bloggers who will just promote anything they can just to make money. And that's a short term success. So I'm not for that, you know. I'm very grateful, Ella, that you accepted my invitation to film this video here in Istanbul. Uh, and if you want to know more about modeling or healthy living, definitely check out Ella's YouTube channel and Instagram. I think she has two channels on uh, in English and in Turkish. So go ahead and follow her. And yeah, stay here on my channel if you want to learn more about other jobs, other professions. And we'll see each other soon again. Bye. Bye-bye.